normal cooling sessions at home um, take about 40 minutes and uh, this evening's will take about 15 if you're lucky. So um, there's quite a lot to talk about but I'm first of all um, going to introduce the horse and he's called Barolo and he's Charlotte's up and coming Grand Prix horse behind Vallegro and he's a Hanoverian, a German horse by Brightly. So if you know about breeding, he, he, he's quite well known stallion Brightly. And he is owned by Anna Seifert Khan and myself and Charlotte. Uh, we all have a little piece of him, spread it all out a bit. And we came across him when he was three years old and uh, he was with a, a friend of mine, a, a girl that I help, and um, he was a very sweet three and four year old. Now if you ride, you, you will probably know that three and four year olds are very sweet, and five and six year olds can be pretty difficult when they start to find their strength, and they start to get personality, and his personality was quite large. And, um, he decided that he didn't like other horses, which is quite difficult if you're a competition horse, as you can imagine. So he did get a few frights at a show where somebody ran into him. So he was quite nervous um, when we got him uh, with being other horses and um, a few people had fallen off him. Now, we sorted that out by putting him in a very small field with three other horses. And he used to walk around the edge of the fence like this. Uh, tried to keep out of the way, but of course they uh, went and uh, made sure that he did become friends. So he now likes other horses. And in fact, yesterday was very funny because warming up here, you can imagine at Windsor on a non dressage uh, time, he was working in a small arena over there with 12 coloured cobs. And uh, that gave him the surprise of his life, but he did uh, seem to like them. So I think we've made progress. As you can see, he's chestnut. And if Charlotte didn't dye her hair, she would be chestnut. So redheads uh, do go together. So he did meet his match when he met Charlotte. And um, he seems to have really come on the right side of good. So we're very excited about him. He's nine years old. So this is quite young for coming to Grand Prix. We're hoping he's going to do his first Grand Prix in a couple of weeks. As you can see, he's ridden in a snaffle bridle. And all horses um, should be able to go in a snaffle bridle before we progress to a double bridle, which you will see uh, all the horses this evening in uh, for the Grand Prix classes. So the exercises that we use, um, are, we're going to start in canter, and you will see Charlotte doing a leg yield in canter. Now we use a, a lot in our training because it's a suppling exercise. You don't see leg yield in canter in a test. But what you'll see here is Charlotte just riding from one side of the arena to the other. And if you're looking from the front, you'll see there that she bends the horse to the left. He's going to the right. If he was bent to the right, it would be a half pass. Now, she should be able to go sideways across this arena changing flexion, so this time we're going to do a leg yield to a half pass to a leg yield, and it really is for you to see the sort of suppleness that we expect. A dressage horse is supposed to be a gymnast, and here is the leg yield, now she looks through his ears in the half pass, so when you see horses tonight doing the half pass, when, when we're sitting on top, what we have to be able to see is the letter through their ears. So that tells us that the front of the face is turned in the half pass. So you shouldn't see any twisting or tipping. And Charlotte, let's half pass to the right. So here, she's ignoring my instructions and leg yielding. That's quite normal if any of you know our relationship. And now she's doing it in her own time, which is also part of our relationship. So, there also you can see the horse now doing flying changes. So the leg yield is nothing to do with what's in the test, but it is suffering. So Charlotte, do a circle down there. And then should we do some zigzagging up the long side? Now, in the Grand Prix, a zigzag is the horse cantering six strides to the left, six to the right, and back again. 
and Charlotte's going to do it on the long side. Now, why do we do it on the long side? Because here, we can tell if the horse is even both ways. One, two, three, four, straight, change, over, two, three, four, straight, change, and back, three, four, straight, change, four, straight, change. So we know Charlotte can count to six, that's good news. But I don't know whether you saw something happen here, and the horse, she was almost a little bit late with her aid, and so he landed a little bit flat on that one. Four, straight, change, good. Three, four, straight, change. So look how, we're just trying to see if he moves evenly to the left, and evenly back to the right again, and does nice, clean, fine changes. This was a lot better. Let's do a circle down there. Now we'll try and show you um, on the center line, a zigzag. So all of the difficult movements that you see uh, in a Grand Prix have a coefficient of two. So they have that coefficient of two from five judges and that's because their movements are difficult. So let's have a look at as if Charlotte was in a Grand Prix. She's got to do three strides to the left to start. Straight change. Two, three, four, straight change. And she's got to move up the arena, looking for even bends on both sides. So she finishes it, she goes straight, she does a change, she turns right, and hopefully you can see there a clean, nice zigzag. And when it has a coefficient of two on it, you have to also remember that it's important not to make the mistakes. Now, we're going to have a look at the flying changes here. So, in tonight's test, you will see flying changes every second stride and flying changes every stride. So we'll have a look at the two tempi changes first. So, one, two, three. Look at the ground that she's covering here. She's being very brave because she's not in a competition. But there's something, you know, this might be dressage, but when you do um, a, a test, the judges will reward you if you're brave. So there's no good just going without mistakes. You also have to do this. Look at the push forward, the lift, no mistakes. And I think we can give that a round of applause there for that. Okay, do a circle. So you'll see if you're looking at it from the back or the front as well, you know, how important it is that the horse also is straight. So this is a training demonstration, and so Charlotte decided to do them on the wall, because if we do them on the wall, the horse really learns to jump in a straight line. So now the one tempies, every stride, we'll do them on the wall to start with. So again, she has to move her legs every step. She's covering the ground again. And this feels, when you're a rider, this feels a little bit like you're sitting on a trampoline. You get that really nice bounce up off the floor, and the trick is not to wait to see if the horse has done it. Because if you wait to see, did the horse do the change, then you become behind the movement yourself. So the horse has to fit in with... Okay, let's give him a little walk a minute. When you're ready, Charlotte. Again, I say that and I look the other way and then she'll do it, you see. So, so I'm quite good at training. I'm better at training the horses than I am the riders, as you can see here. And of course, because she didn't give it a break, she made a mistake. So perhaps if she uh, concentrates again here, when you sit on the horse as well, like, like Charlotte, we haven't really talked about a rider, but uh, you can see the ones on a diagonal. He's not leaving the line, and now he can have a little break. Good. So the horse has three paces. He has a walk, he has a trot, he has a canter. The canter in the Grand Prix has a lot of movement, it has pirouettes, it has the zigzag, and it has these flying changes you've seen. And um, we'll do look a little bit in a minute at the trot. So that's the horse. What makes a really good dressage horse? You know, it has to have good paces, it has to have quality. In other words, you know, do you look at it and say, wow, so it has to have personality. And they also have to be brave, because as you can imagine, 
going down, for instance, the tunnel last year uh, at the World Games in Normandy, when we warm up, well, you can see out the back there, we have a very small arena to warm up, and it's very peaceful because you're all sat in here. And uh, at the World Games last year, when we were warming up, it just tells you what sort of temperament your horse has because it's very peaceful out there. There's you, your wife, your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, or all of those if you're busy. Um, and they're the only people that are with you. And then you come down a chute uh, into the football stadium, which we had at the World Games, and there are 20,000, 25,000 people um, who don't keep quiet. And, you know, whoever wrote a dressage test, you know what's the first thing you have to do? Halt and stand still. That's a great movement, isn't it? When, you, when your horse is electric, you come through this tunnel, it's all been very peaceful, and um, your horse has to stand still, that's the first thing, and not move. And yet it has to be excited enough, hot enough, to do all of these movements that you see, because these aren't lazy horses that do this. They're very... Um, trim, trained, uh, and, and sensitive horses. So it's quite something to have a personality that can deal with the work and yet be able to do this look on a long rein, not worry about the surroundings, and walk. And if you see the horse in the walk here, this is a pretty big walk. So when, when the judge is again looking for uh, an extended walk, we have to see where the front foot comes down to the floor and look at the hind foot come over where the front print lands. That's called an overtrack. And, you know, he walks <coughs> with a very big overtrack. So let's have a look at the counter pirouette now, Charlotte. And the counter pirouettes are, again, difficult. We do them on a centre line, so we have to turn up the centre line here, A to C. And you have to do six to eight steps, or you should do six to eight steps, uh, to make a really good pirouette. But Charlotte's going to do um, a working pirouette first. So a working pirouette is about six to eight meters um, on a circle, and she's just going to move his hind legs towards me. So you can imagine that, you know, a horse in a full counter pirouette, really has to take his weight behind, and that's called sitting. So all the weight will come back on his hind legs when he does it, uh, it's smaller. Again, because he's only nine years old this year, we try not to do things that are very difficult too often, because we want him to keep thinking it's easy. So Charlotte's moving him to the right, and then I don't know if you saw that there, and then she turns his front towards me and she pushed him to the left. So then she goes back into a shoulder in. So that moves his hind legs underneath his tummy. Because when you see a really good pirouette, the hind leg stays underneath the tummy. It doesn't go to the inside. And then she comes back to the right again. And now you can go out. And maybe when you're not going around me so I feel so dizzy, you could then go a little bit further down. And then let's have a look at a counter pirouette. So if you do a working one, and then do a pirouette, then do a working one. So here he is in the working one. And now she's going to sit down as she gets to the centre line and now turning the front around the hind legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now she goes to the bigger circle again. So we do something difficult and then we do something easy so that he always finishes the exercise a little bit easier and that gives him that realisation that you know he doesn't give up when it gets difficult. So that's a very nice working pirouette. Let's do the one on the left hand side. So if you ride yourself, you'll know that horses like humans um, can also be one-sided. You know, some horses are a lot easier to bend to the right than the left and um, I find that most horses actually are better bending on the right hand side than the left. So when you ride on the left rein, you tend to work a little bit more on suffling and on the right rein, straightening. So here you can see again, now if you photograph that, imagine how his hind leg, um, if you look at that, you'll see that he has to soften there and he has to carry his weight down. Don't look at the whole thing, just look at the bottom for a minute. And now she's pushing him out again and now she's gonna bring him back in again and now make a small one. So now look at her turn the front. So she's turning the front around the back, not pushing the back to the inside. And that, very nice. And now go to a bigger one again. 
And, you know, I can have to say, you know, there's a lot of skill involved in doing that as well. You know, I mean, Charlotte is not an average rider. She's a very good rider. And, um, you know, what makes her good? Well, that's core strength. So that's what we're going to talk about with the rider. This is your core strength, how you sit on the horse. Because if you find when you're sitting on a horse, you hold yourself on with the reins, or you squeeze it with the legs, then you will find that you are not independent. So you need to be independent of the horse. So that means that Charlotte has to go to the gym. I go with her and watch, and make sure she does all of her exercises properly. And uh, that's why she's so fit. Right, one transition to trot, Charlotte. We have to finish in a second now. So we're just going to show you, as you can see, we are running out of time. There's a lot of things to explain with the movements, but we'll just have a look at the lovely Barolo trot. And you can see what makes the trot beautiful on any horse. And I think it's the moment of suspension. So if you can teach your horse to have a moment of suspension, and there you can see Charlotte doing a few steps of passage there, um, that will make him a really good looking horse. So if your horse isn't blessed with great looks, I know we all think our horses are beautiful, but uh, if, when you teach them to really have suspension, then I think they all become beautiful. Let's have a look at him on one diagonal. He's going to do an extended trot for you so you can see that. And then she will finish the session how you should always start. So an extension here on the diagonal should be a maximum trot. So look at the ground he covers. Yeah. Okay, let's stretch his neck now, Charlotte. So you can see that there's a lot of potential. He's an exciting horse. He's got a long way to go if he's going to catch Villegro, as you can imagine. It's not very nice for them. Uh, but anyway, it's raised the standard for all of them. And uh, hopefully, you never know. You never know if you've got a gold medalist in your yard, do you? You have to have a training system and um, hopefully follow it. So, thank you for watching. I'm sorry it was um, quite brief, but uh, hopefully, there's a few things in there. I'm sure you'll we'll all be practicing your dressage tomorrow. And uh, thank you for uh, listening to us this evening. Well, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, Friday, March the 15th, put it in your diary because we have been truly privileged. Two of the greats in world dressage, and that is no exaggeration from...